Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Akim Bode Adebeji. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Biosystems and Agricultural Engineering, uh, College of Ag, Food and Environment, University of Kentucky. Um, my area of specialization is food process engineering. Uh, I've been here at UK, University of Kentucky now for a little over six years. Um, there are two research programs uh, that I started when I got here. And one of the research program is um, grain value addition, uh, specifically uh, using extrusion uh, processing technology to create value added products. Uh, in the last four years, we've done a couple of projects. Uh, some of them were research based, some of them were projects that we did for companies, uh, you know, local companies start up here in Kentucky. A lot of us probably, we, we, we've been to grocery stores and then see some of the foods in the breakfast cereal uh, shelf. Uh, some of them were actually made using extrusion. Uh, for example, Fruit Loop. Uh, the color Fruit Loop that we see, the puffed product that we see, uh, they're made using extrusion uh, technology. If you go to uh, animal feed section in, in your store, in your pet food store, some of those uh, animal feed, they are also made using extrusion. Uh, for example, a lot of pet foods, dog foods, uh, they are used, uh, they are produced using extrusion processing technology. Uh, aquatic feed, a lot of aquatic feed, they are used or they are produced using extrusion processing technology. And the unique thing about using extrusion for a product like aquatic feed is that you want different characteristics in your aquatic feed. Some of them are floating, some of them are semi-sinking, some of them are sinking products. And extrusion kind of can, can bring a unique angle to that because you could use it to create different density in your product. So if you want it to float, that means you want it to expand a little more. Uh, if you want it to sink, then you want it to be a little, a little dense. So you had more water into it. Uh, so those are some of the common products that are made using extrusion uh, technology. Extrusion is very interesting because it's a very versatile process. Versatile in that it combines several unit operations into one and it does it very quickly. So in extrusion, uh, you could have mixing of your ingredients, you could have kneading of your ingredients, you could have uh, texturization of your ingredient, you could have cooking of the ingredient, you could have sterilization you know, of your ingredient that will eventually come out as a cooked product. You can also have all kinds of shapes, so it allows you to create product of different shapes. We have just a, a single type of die here, which is the hand at which the product comes out of the extruder. You can create a die that is the hole, the small hole, at the end of the extruder of different shapes to your, you know, to your own taste and to meet whatever you want to, to make. As you will see from some of the products I mentioned, you know, Fruit Loops and the like, you, know, you have them in different shapes and different sizes. So it, it allows you to create an area of product. It allows you to uh, produce your product very quickly. And also, it uses very minimal amount of energy, minimal amount of water, and produces very, very less waste. So it makes it a very, very unique, unique, unique process. Uh, from the time that you had ingredients into the extruder up until the point that it comes out of the dye hand, it takes about one minute to one and a half minutes. So you could imagine if you're going to create a ready to eat product and you're able to do it in just you know, one minute, unlike the traditional method of you know, making a similar product that would take like you know, 30 minutes to one and a half hours. So you could imagine. Now, the, the downside to extrusion is that the extruder is very expensive, which means that the initial capital cost is very high. But then the cost of maintenance and the cost of production is really, really low. So when you look at you know, the actual cost of making a product over a period of time, it is cheaper using extrusion. And also consider the fact that it's a very, very versatile you know, process that you could use to make all kind of product. One of the projects that we have done was to look at how we can use waste from bourbon processing, the spent grain, use it as an ingredient for making expanded ready-to-eat snack. And why that is very important, very unique, is that waste from bourbon processing is a problem for the industry 
they pay to get rid of the waste. And what we're trying to do is that we want to find a value, uh, a value that can be added to that waste by using extrusion process to create product that consumers will like. Now, this waste is very rich in protein and very rich in fiber. So what we're trying to do is to create a high fiber, high protein, expanded product uh, using extrusion processing by you know, utilizing waste from uh, bourbon processing. Um, we have also done other projects where, where we looked at underutilized grain. Uh, we've worked on millet. I can show you one of the products that we made. This is a popped uh, product that was made 100% from, from millet. So some of you may be wondering what is millet. Uh, millet is what we call bud feed here in the US. But in other part of the world, it's just like any other grain, like corn, like wheat. And because we don't use it to make food in the U.S., we say, why not? I mean, it's, it's equally as good. It's very rich in protein. In fact, it has higher amounts of protein than corn and wheat. So we thought, why not let's explore, you know, making a product, a you know, product that can be consumed uh, by human out of millet. So we created this product here in our lab here. Uh, nobody's producing this anywhere, but this can be made into, you know, a fruit product that people will like. Uh, it could be consumed as it, as it is. Uh, we made this by just adding water to ground millet. We could add sugar to it. We could add salt to it to give it a little bit more taste. We could add color, you know, to kind of create a variety out of it. We can create different shape. Uh, this is just an oblong kind of cylindrical shape that we have out of uh, the product here, but we can create all kind of other, you know, shape that will be very attractive you know, to end consumers, especially uh, kids that love eating things that look colory, look sweet, you know, and tasty. But then you know, every other person can also consume it. One other thing that could be made out of a you know, product like this is that we could grind this as it is, and then make it into a slurry. You could add milk to it, and then you consume it uh, you know, like a breakfast cereal. So that is one unique thing that we have uh, kind of, uh, you know, made in our, in our lab here. We've also made all the products, uh, you know, using our extruder. Uh, we have produced pasta using uh, underutilized ingredients, uh, cassava flour plus wheat flour. Um, we have also, we, we worked on, uh, you know, looking at making pet food using grain. Typically, grain is not used for making pet food, but what we did was to look at how can we, you know, make a pet food that will have equal nutrients as those that you find in the market, you know, using corn, soy, soy meal, and other major ingredients. So this is some of the product that we've made, you know, using uh, our extruder and using unique ingredients. Um, uh, extrusion can also be used to make um, biodegradable uh, packaging instead of, you know, making the packaging from plastics because the extruder can make pork product we can look at some ingredients that are grain-like to make biodegradable packaging. We've not done anything like that, but it's not a big deal. It's the same process that we use for making expanded product. So these are, you know, major, majorly three products that we could make. The opportunities that people can explore, those who are really looking at maybe small-scale extrusion production business, you know, making, you know, breakfast cereal or snack. Uh, this is some of the things that we could help uh, small, small business holders to, you know, to, to, uh, to, to kind of do a proof of concept uh, that they will eventually scale up, uh, you know, for their own different applications. We have a unique capacity at University of Kentucky that you do not find in any other university in the whole of the state of Kentucky. I'm not aware of anybody else that is doing extrusion processing technology that is capable of doing what we are doing here. So this is a great opportunity for investors uh, who are looking at, okay, what can I do? Um, I'm interested in uh, agricultural processing, agricultural product processing, process that is environment friendly. Extrusion processing is that. It uses minimum amount of energy, minimum amount of water, produces less amount of waste. It's a very quick process. It can produce an area of product. And a lot of products, when you see them, you like them. They look unique, whether they are food for human or they are feed for animal. Or even if it's the biodegradable packaging material, if you actually see biodegradable packaging material, 
you will be tempted to want to consume them even though they are not meant for consumption. So extrusion is a very unique process. And I think the capability that we have here at University of Kentucky is unique. And that is why we think that we're the best place for anyone that's interested uh, in this kind of technology. Uh, if you have other questions and you want to talk to, to us more, uh, you can reach me by my email, uh, my first name dot my last name. Thank you very much. <laughs>